It's not very often a game comes around that makes me think about all the other narrative games that I played before it. Bug Snacks is that game. It's hard to place Bug Snacks into any particular genre, as it has many strengths that don't necessarily rely on each other to work. You spend the vast majority of your time taking pictures and capturing Bug Snacks, which are cute, oftentimes hilarious looking critters that inhabit Snacktooth Island. Once you've taken a picture of a creature, you get some hints on the best way to capture it. Upon capturing the bug snacks, you can utilize them for a number of different purposes, almost all of which involve feeding that creature to a grumpus, one of the humanoid visitors on Snacktooth Island. Once a grumpus is fed a bug snack, one of their body parts will turn into the piece of food that the bug snack was made of. It's an absolutely bananas concept that seems silly on the surface, but works very well due to the cast of characters on the island. Once you get used to the mechanics of bug snacks, you'll find that wrapped inside this simulator game is a truly remarkable story of inclusion acceptance, self-realization, and community. The story of Bug Snacks starts out simply enough. Players assume control of a newspaper reporter who receives a tip from Elizabeth Megafig about the mysterious Snacktooth Island. She explains that the Bug Snacks are half bug, half snack, and that this discovery needs to be shared with the world. After convincing their editor to let them cover this story, the reporter is soon flying to Snacktooth Island, only to crash land after being attacked by what appears to be a flying pizza. After finding Philbo Fiddlepie, the self-proclaimed mayor of Snacksburg, the reporter learns that Elizabeth has gone missing, and that all the residents of the island left the town after some sort of fight. It's up to the reporter to travel across the different island biomes, which include some beaches, forests, deserts, and a snowy mountain peak, to convince everyone to come back to Snacksburg and help find Elizabeth. Progress in the early game is somewhat slow, as your choices are limited in where you can go and who you can talk to. But once you start to get the first couple of Grumbuses back to town, things start to open up and allow the player a bit of agency over their decisions. As people return to Snacksburg, the player can conduct interviews with them, learning their motivations for coming to Snacktooth Island, what caused them to leave Snacksburg, and what they think might have happened to Elizabeth. While educational, these interview sections were a letdown for me, as there was no consequence to asking any questions, and there were no branching paths when it came to answers. Some questions did lead to follow-ups, but that wasn't for any reason other than asking a question in the list. Interviews felt more like a workaround for the player character not audibly speaking at any point in the game. I just felt like I was reading a question in the notebook, pressing X, listening to the answer, and repeating that process a dozen times until the interview was over. Contextually, it makes sense that the reporter needs to interview people on the island for their story, but as a player, it felt like I had no way to influence this process. If the player character had a visible model and a voice actor, every interview could have just been a cutscene and nothing would have been different. I do understand that it's likely that the developers did not want to assign a gender to the player character, but it still felt a little stilted. Each of the Grumpuses has their own batch of quests, the only ones of which being mandatory are the ones that get them to go back to Snacksburg. Every quest involves providing them with bug snacks for one purpose or another. This seems shallow on the surface, but the side quests are where the character relationships, both with themselves and each other, are found. This is where Bugsnax really captured me. The thought and care put into these relationships, especially for a game that is going to catch the attention of a younger audience, is incredible. There is a wealth of representation among the cast that includes several ages, gender identities, and sexualities. Bugsnax puts forth the effort to include as many relationship types as it can, demonstrating that all relationships could work, and no one should be shamed of who they love. This is an incredibly powerful message to find in a game for a young audience, and I really hope that folks dive into the side quests to discover it all for themselves. As mentioned previously, the gameplay loop involves finding bug snacks, taking their picture to learn about them, then capturing them for one purpose or another. The act of capturing them is where the puzzle elements of the game come in. Some creatures can be caught by simply setting up a trap in their path and waiting for them to walk into it, but most require at least a little bit of forethought and setup. As you progress through the game, the player is awarded with an arsenal of tools that will aid them in their capturing endeavors. There's the snack ball, which contains a straw bee that can be coated in a sauce to entice another bug snack, then guided into a trap using a laser pointer. There's the lunch pad, which the player can place objects onto and launch them to far off places. And late in the game, the player receives a device that allows them to set up trip lines to stop and disorient bug snacks in its path. Certain bug snacks have to be caught in specific ways using a combination of tools, so players will be busy for hours trying to collect all 100. In terms of performance, I played the game on a PlayStation 4 Pro and experienced many instances of severe frame loss. It wasn't enough to keep me from enjoying my time, as it usually resolved itself within a few seconds, but it was very noticeable. The game will also be available on PlayStation 5 as a launch title, as well as for free on PlayStation Plus for several months, so hopefully the performance on the next generation is better than that of the current one. The controls of Bug Snacks are simple and work well, never making me feel like I had to fight with a camera or any of the platforms. Everything works very well, aside from the frame rate issues. Admittedly, when I saw the trailer for Bug Snacks, I felt like the humor of the game, both in the writing and in the design of the creatures, was going to be the only selling point. 
I figured that it would be a fun game to spend a little time with before moving on, but here I am, 24 hours after having seen the credits, and I'm trying to figure out how to fit in as much Bug Snacks content on my channel as possible before I cover the PS5 launch. I was truly enraptured by the stories of all the denizens of Snacksburg and was repeatedly surprised by their growth as people. This is a game that I found myself saying just one more quest as the hours melted away. I can't recommend Bug Snacks enough to anyone who's looking for a short, fun game to play, a touching story about inclusion and diversity, or both. In 20 years, Bug Snacks will be looked upon as a touchstone for today's generation of young gamers. The stories of inclusion and diversity are told in a way that normalizes what can be very scary and tough conversations in real life. It exemplifies how everyone should communicate with each other, especially when it comes to sexuality and identity. Bug Snacks deserves your attention.